Welcome back to the final installment of the Saab Exterior Restoration Series featuring this 1984 Saab 900 and your host, JMP Saves Cars. I've got a special treat for you as we examine where the car is at now. Let's look at where it's been. Yep, there's a picture from about 10 years ago. And this car is just doing its thing, living the Swedish car life. So, we're at the point where we got to get real cleaned up, make sure everything is the way it should be, and carry on moving into the actual application of the paint. So let's get right into the action here, and we'll resume with some uh, live work action. Well, it's been a while. It's been a tough, tough battle. But this car is, it's ready for paint. It's gonna be kind of a complicated process because I'm gonna go from, I'm gonna go through primer and then epoxy, rather sealer, to, you know, spraying the whole thing in single stage. So I've got it clean. I had to deal with some uh, issues on the bottoms of the doors down there. And those panels had some chips and rust starting. And then just this morning, this panel across here, I had to address some uh, rust forming in that gap there. And then over there. So I'm beginning, beginning the arduous task of masking up this car. And I can tell you for sure, having the room clean and having the car clean before you mask is a super important step. One of the most important, if not the. So anything that you can get a wet wipe on and just get rid of the dust, that's less dust that you're dealing with now. And then when you have the car, you know, painted and you're you're ready to go back together, that's less dust that you're dealing with then. Clean all of your tape edges. It really makes a big difference. It sticks better. The whole process just goes easier. A lot of the time you're gonna be putting tape facing up on a seam and back taping it. It helps a lot to do two applications of tape so that it's not relying on just the one bond and get your plastic and roll your plastic on and all the holes anywhere that air can go it's going to go and if you have dust all over stuff that's primer so what does primer do when base coat or single stage you know urethane gets in the air it's going to bond to it and then it's painted it's only only easy to clean now. So some of these areas like the trim around the windshield and the trim around the back window, they're tough. These are rubber seals and the rubber seals rest right on the paint. So this is like a spline, plastic spline tape. And I'm using it just to lift it off of the surface just a bit. This process is difficult. It's one piece at a time and you're slipping them in. It's more similar to uh, dealing with a, a tire. Not a, not a perfect setup over here, but I think it's gonna work out just fine. So you can lift it up. This area is not pulling it up very hard. I'm just gonna go with it. And uh, it's gonna look good. This is a long process. But when you're done, it's like, wow, this car is brand new. So I gotta muster up the courage to spray this thing and do it justice. I don't paint every day, but when I do, I try my best. 
I'll get the bottom side of the hood done. The fender tops, they're done. The cowl was sprayed and intentionally sprayed heavy so that I could sand it back. And when I'm masking up this car, I need to mask it in a way that I can open and close the hood. The glass is protected. As you notice, I put, put this glass back in. The less assembly that you have and the less moving of parts past painted surfaces, the lower your chances of having to fix something that you didn't need to fix because it was good. Trust me, I've had it happen. The interior is going to get some plastic on the seats. God forbid any, you know, any uh, fumes get in there. When you plastic the interior of a car and you paint it, the car won't smell like paint for as long because it doesn't absorb into the seats and into the carpet. Even though it's masked off, the smell will get in there and it will linger and the car will reek like the body shop forever. And after you pay a bunch of money to have something done, the less of that you can have, the better. Some people really hate the smell. So I'm gonna continue on here and I'll do a few more kind of check-ins, but I'm focusing on painting this car in future years when uh, things are a bit easier and I'm not so booked up on projects. I can take a lot more time to do in-depth how-tos on this type of process, but really when you doing it for a living you kind of just got to get through the jobs and I'm feeding you what I can about this when I can well that was that was a massive job that was a masking job that took all day I'm not gonna spray any paint today because I have I have exhausted myself and I've still got the tires to mask up and a little bit of prep work, clean the car, and then I can epoxy. So I'm just going to save that for tomorrow. The reason it took so long is this entire car I can open and close whatever panel I want. So actually I can start my painting process with things open, paint them, close it. I gotta do all the door edges into here a bit. So it's kind of tricky to figure out what needed to be open and what needs to be closed and got to leave this open, but that's a closed panel in there. I might try and get a piece of tape in there. So, oh, I still need a piece of paper on the radiator. If it's ready to go. Ready to go for tomorrow. All right, the moment has come. The room is ready. The car is ready. I might be ready. I'm gonna put a coat of epoxy primer mixed as a sealer on here. And uh, if I can pull it off with uh, very to little to no defects, I'm gonna paint it. I'm a little concerned about some areas, whether or not it will show the recent body work. So I may have to do two coats of epoxy. We're just gonna see how it goes on. I'm just gonna take my time and just uh, robotically get this in epoxy. This is actually harder than spraying the paint, if you ask me. So here we go.
All right, I've got the roof sealed. And then I did the wheel arch, that fender, underneath the door, wheel arch, the rear of the under, the rear bumper area, this wheel arch, underneath here, and on this side of the hood, rope. I also did the gutters and the windshield tops. Now, that was all the paint that I had in the cup. I wish I could have gotten the roof a little bit wetter, but it looks good. There is an area that's drier right here, but it's, it's applied pretty nice. So now what I've done is I've taken a tack rag after waiting a little bit. I've stayed away from the freshly sprayed areas, but I've taken away all of the overspray that's sitting on the surfaces yet to be painted. That's a hack for you right there. If you paint right over that stuff, it's like, it's like gritty and it'll throw you off. It'll make piles. It gets into the corners. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, I'm going to paint this panel and then I'm going to paint this panel and then I'm going to paint this panel until the car is totally sealed. I'm just going to focus on one panel at a time. The rear of the car is going to incorporate the quarters. So I'm going to paint the whole rear of the car at once. That just works for me. It helps me focus on what I'm actually doing instead of getting overwhelmed by fumes and whatever. That's not good. I have to put a piece of tape there. That's all the epoxy primer mixed with the sealer that's going to go on. I had to touch up one or two spots. And I also put a second coat on the doors and the rear quarters. Looks really good. I think I might paint it tonight. I'm going to let this sit for about two hours and then I'm going to go. I just reached inside and opened up the, the hood so that I could get to this cowl and unmask that. See, I got a nice, uh, nice feathered edge on the fender, and of course, I'm going to go over the blue a little bit. But now I can get to that, paint that, close the hood, and then paint the car. So one coat, 
and then close the hood. Hopefully nothing happens. You know, you always come to this point in a restoration or a repaint or an interior redo when you're finally ready to put all the bits back on. You just gotta clean and reset the pieces, make them look as new as possible. A little bit more to do down there. And then get them back on the car. Sure is a fine looking machine. In the end, you can actually save a lot of time by just taping the whole jam. Anything you don't want paint on, just tape it. And you take it off and you're good. Nice and clean everywhere.
Well, this car is done. It's ready to go home, be released back into the wild. And I'm sure the owner is gonna be quite pleased. Really came out nice. And to think how ironic this is. I know the car's turned around, that's not the irony. The irony is that pulled through that door and it looked just like this, but not as good. And years ago, when it was brand new, this is pretty much exactly what it looked like. It's as close as I could get with the color. And I think it's a really nice color. I can't wait to see it outside. And do my fair share of wet sanding and buffing to get it the way that I want it. But I just, you know, I didn't want it to be a show car finish. I want it to be kind of OE, the way that they would have let it out of the showroom. And uh, I think that's it. So in the end, this was a big job. This was a seemingly simple job, but it had many uh, exponents to the individual standard tasks. Now on, on assembly, I had to reassemble these doors and these doors are, uh, they're different. They're kind of like old school, you know, metal trim and but I can, I can tell you for sure, four doors, two days worth of work. My fingers are very sore. These pieces of trim, they go into like a glue groove and they have to be kind of like freed up and then pushed in there and clips and these moldings repainted the moldings. Single stage. The car just looks right with them. So, hope you enjoyed the exterior restoration of this 1984 Saab 900. This is the car that he picked to have a good friend repaint and just time travel. Shave 40 years off the exterior. So, happy to do it and very pleased with the result. goes it's 
gone. There's the uh, imprint of a restoration. Let's see if it lost any fluids. Eh. That ain't bad. Well, we'll see what the next vehicle to come through that door is.